So I got an idea. Now I don't. I can 100% see myself right <sighs> in you. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> Chef Eric Gephardt here, Kamada Joe. Hope everybody's doing well. The holidays are upon us, okay? Uh, you know, we got enough going on in our minds with everything that's incorporated with the holidays, so let's keep the cooking simple. It's all about fundamentals, fun, and deliciousness. Uh, I want to talk to you. Hear those fish? Oh, that was a big fish I back think, there. Yeah, walleye. I don't know. <laughs> Next video. Next, next, up. next week is going to be the walleye, stuffed walleye. Um, today we're going to go with an E3 meat piece of prime rib. It's not the whole entire loin. It's not a standing rib roast, um, but it is a beautiful cut of ribeye. So we're going to do a smaller portion of prime rib. Uh, and again, it's about fundamentals. It's about keeping it simple. It's about maintaining temperatures and getting big, bold sears and a little smoke in there to boot. So uh, let's get it started. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so let's start with making the fire, okay? Um, notice how I've got one deflector shield in. That's going to give me access to get a big, bold sear here and then flip it over and go semi-indirect on this side. So I really like this. It's kind of like a yoga pose. This would be my, my warrior stance, uh, my holiday warrior stance. Eggnog might have started a little early today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dump in a fair amount of charcoal into the right hand side, get our fire started, and then bank the coal all the way to the back evenly underneath the heat deflector and the non-indirect uh, side. So we're going to get a good bold sear on the right and then we're going to move it over and low and slow. We're going to kill all the oxygen in this grill and let the residual heat of the ceramic finish it off for a perfect medium rare. But let's get that fire started. While we're waiting for our grill to come up to temperature, uh, let's go ahead and trim our uh, ribeye or our prime rib just a little bit and get it seasoned up. So again, it's a beautiful roast from our good friends at E3 Meats. Um, notice it's got this large fat cap towards the end. I'm going to trim just a little bit of that. You think about your endemic piece of prime rib, it's generally got a tail on it, um, but I want to trim just a bit off of that. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to do with that hunk of fat. And look where I'm cutting. Not too much. And if we want to keep that slope, perhaps I go at an angle. Okay. And I've still got a good tab there and a good tab there. So we're good to go. Uh, you can put some cross hatches through this fat cap if you want to drive a little more seasoning home. Let's go ahead and do that together. And I like to save pieces like this, especially when I'm doing some searing. And we are going to do a little direct searing. I'll take this fat cap and use this, especially when I'm doing beef, to, to uh, oil up the grill grates. Okay, So this is just big, bold, natural flavor. And we're doing exactly what we'd be doing if we were using, say, olive oil or duck fat or anything like that. Except for the fact that you've already paid for this. So stop throwing this in the trash can, okay? Save it for sausages or uh, burger grind or uh, really getting a nice coating on your grill grates. Cool. All right, seasoning time. Uh, today we are using blackening seasoning from our good friends at Lane's Barbecue. Uh, I love a blackening season. I grew up with uh, Paul Perdome, Redfish Magic. That stuff was great. I uh, find Ryan Lane over at Lane's Barbecue does a great job with this blackening. So we're going to go on pretty liberally. And there's a lot of meat here. So, you know, there's a good salt content. There's a little bit of heat. This is just going to look great. Look, we're already winning. I love that checkerboard look. All right, so I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Uh, and what I'm talking about, just so I can be clear, is, is that right there. See how it's starting to get flaky? It's starting to ash up a little bit. Well, that's how we want everybody to start getting. All right, so our grill is almost to temperature. I'm feeling some good heat. Let's make a quick, uh, I don't know, it's not a glaze, but uh, we're gonna sear this and then rub it down with a nice mustard, garlic, fresh thyme, and scorpion rub paste. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So half a cup of stone ground Dijon, a couple of tablespoons of oil, two teaspoons of salt and pepper or your favorite barbecue rub. I don't know, like a tablespoon of fresh garlic. 
if you like a lot of garlic, put more garlic in. And a uh, little pro tip, if you're, if you're still using pre-chopped garlic that's in that marinade, time to take the training wheels off. All right, that stuff just makes everything taste like garbage. Sorry. So you want to use fresh garlic, um, not that marinated in acetic acid garlic that if you taste it, it doesn't taste anything like garlic, okay? I'm a firm believer in fresh garlic. And it's going to pay dividends. No point in getting a really nice roast and then putting fake garlic on there. All right, fresh time. Let me show you a little trick because there's nothing worse than picking these little things individually. I did a Super Bowl event one time where I had to pick 10 pounds of thyme. The boxes were taller than I was. So put your hands together and just kind of shake out and look what we get. All the fresh thyme we could possibly need right there. And just to get things activated, let's run the knife through it a little bit. Team, we're there. This looks great. Now, this isn't the sauce. We're going to do a little horseradish buttermilk sauce here in a little bit. Uh, but this is just an incredible glaze after we've seared it to roast on the outside of our holiday prime rib. Easy peasy. We're gonna we're gonna bury these right in the hottest part of our of our fire. And I got things a little spread out, so it's gonna take a second. Uh, we don't want to start trying to access the power of this smoke yet. We want to see combustion. Boom! You see that little piece just combust? I want to see that whole chunk go. So you can't see the smoke right now because it's so clean. Okay, it's burning up all those impurities right off the bat. Let's put our grill grate at the lowest section of the divide and conquer system. Let's season with our beef towel or beef fat. Presentation side down first, no matter what you're doing, whether it's seafood, beef, pork, whatever. Presentation side first. Obviously, that's going to be our presentation side, right? It's not going to be where the bones were. It's going to be that cap. Here we go. Lay it away from you. Remember, today is about fundamentals and basics. But I'm still excited about locking in that smoke sear. See how I made that up, mate? Smoke sear. <laughs> Don't pull it. Don't rush it. Let it let go on its own. There's going to be some dripping. It's going to drip down the charcoal. It's going to make it flare up a little bit. It's okay. If you feel like it's getting a little too aggressive, you can damper down the, uh, the draft door on the bottom. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. So we lost a couple little diamonds. That's okay. Let's get some of our blackening seasoning. Just hit right there, and that's going to blend right in. Oh my gosh, this is great. Let's not forget this uh, this side here. So we're going to stand it up. And remember, we banked all our coals primarily to the back. Um, so we've got a hot spot, and then we can drag it on back if we feel like we're getting a little aggressive. I love having all these different heat signatures. And I'm just getting a good sear all the way around this beautiful roast. We're almost ready to start painting. All right, so let's go ahead, Nate, you like that? I love it. Let's go ahead. And start working on our paint. Just kind of dabbing in those nooks and crannies. You know, and if you got a good pair of gloves, perhaps get in there with your mitts. So, you know, we're putting the mustard on the outside, the garlic. This is going to be another uh, level of texture and flavor to be more pronounced complexity. Uh, you're going to see this roast on and build a crust. Uh, you know, the blackening season is going to do a great job. The mustard sauce, the fresh thyme, and the garlic are just going to come through. And this is going to crust up. I mean, just look how pretty that is. Imagine when we shut this down and the smoke can adhere more to it and it starts to dry out a little bit. 
uh, and it's it's just going to be another level of whoa what was that you know um, and what we're going to do since we've got it half indirect and half direct right now i've got that fat cap that we trimmed towards the fire right now so that can render out a little bit first and then i'll spin this but uh team this is dynamite right now and if you and if you're looking at this like whoa you know you got that little button on the bottom you can drag it back and watch it again or i'll give it to you one more time indirect side direct side season sear paint indirect till we get to 120. good there you go i just don't want to shut it i just want to keep looking at it. we got to shut this we got to shut this okay so we're down we're going to take our uh control tower and let me show you come on in here nate let me show you i'm not going to close it all the way i'm going to take it to i don't know if that's the first little line i'm going to take it to the second line and you can almost not even see that. That's that translucent blue smoke that everybody talks so much about. And then come on down here. We're gonna we're gonna look at our draft door. And we're also gonna take this to, I don't know, that's about half an inch open. All right. So now we're relying on the residual uh, heat from the ceramic and the dying heat power of the natural lump charcoal. We're not ramping up right now. We're kind of dropping down. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna settle in at about a temperature of about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The sear. My wife says I I say my art reaction too much, so I'm, <laughs> I'm getting away from that. Okay, so this is ridiculous. Um, still feels a little soft to the touch, but you know that's why we use these thermometers. Going in at the thickest. Come on over here, Nathan. Look at the look at the temperature. Uh, we said we wanted to be at 120. We overshot by a degree. All right, not bad, not bad. So there is going to be some carryover cooking that's going to occur. Let's go ahead and slide it off right on to the cutting board. And that is just stunningly gorgeous. All right, that is that is textbook delicious. Uh, spot on. It was an hour and an hour and twenty five. Probably an hour and 45 minutes. What do you think? An hour and a half? Ish, yeah. Yeah, ish. Whatever. I also think that's that's what they say is what dreams are made of. Ah, nice. At least my dreams. Yeah, that's it's it's a beautiful thing. I think the crust set up really nicely. Uh, I'm excited to slice into this and see where, where we are, but we need to hold off for just a minute, okay? We got to let it rest. And for a, for a roast this size, uh, you really want about 30 minutes. We're probably, I'll probably itch out at 12 minutes and we'll slice it. But we'll, we'll, we'll give it, we'll get a little time. Luckily, we've got to make a sauce, so that's going to take five minutes, okay? Maybe, maybe three, all right? Now let's make a fun horseradish sauce. Um, prime rib and ribeye in general has a pretty high fat content so I really enjoy uh, some horseradish in there okay so we're gonna make a buttermilk horseradish cream sauce and I've got some prepared horseradish about a cup of mayonnaise here and two tablespoons of our horseradish and that's gonna light you up you know that's gonna be fun and spicy and then buttermilk you know it's a culture it's got a little uh, acidity to it Let's go in with a tablespoon and a half of that. And usually, I put chives in this, but today, we've got scallion. Just bring it over here for now so I can have a little real estate for slicing the scallion. What would you say the main difference between scallion and chive is? Uh, I think scallion is a little more elegant. I'm sorry, chives. I think chives are a little smaller and a little more elegant. Um, you can cut them a little more uniformly from top to bottom. You don't have to worry about the, you know, the whites and the greens. Um, and they're just perfect little circles, you know. Uh, as far as an onion flavor, I think we're going to get more pronounced flavor from, from the scallion. And I'm into that, especially on big, bold, fatty, roasted beef. Oh, that's great. So the sauce was going to take us two minutes, more like 30 seconds. We're not, we're not breaking into any time letting this thing rest. I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> what do you do? This is the most difficult. Literally, we have to do nothing and let that beef do all the work. I'm not, I'm not into it. 
I'm not into it. Yeah, the beef is doing the work. There's a lot going on, right? So, so what's happening? Why we're resting meat? Uh, you know, we roasted it. It's really tense. Now we're just letting it relax, letting all those juices redistribute from the outside back to the inside. Um, and if we were to cut into this right now, we would see a ton of moisture on the cutting board. And that's a, that just tells us that this roast isn't 100% of what it could have been. And we're doing such a good job so far. Remember, this is technique driven today. Let it rest. We have waited long enough, long enough. Uh, it's been 20 minutes, okay? Well, it's been about, it's been about 15 minutes uh, and I just I just can't wait the anticipation is killing me so I'm gonna slice once here in the middle and remember we came to that 120 we let it rest oh are you kidding me that is absolutely gorgeous okay that is money in the bank and as this uh, the myoglobin and this this flesh that's not been revealed to the oxygen interacts with the oxygen it's going to begin to bloom out much like a tuna when you cut into it it looks uh, a little bit more pale and then once the oxygen hits it starts to bloom so we're going to see a really cool blooming effect here shortly i'm going to turn this into four steaks these are going to be good healthy steaks okay it's the holidays um, so here we go all right, so I've got my, uh, my little silver platter here, uh, and let's plate this up. I'm going to put the two uh, heel pieces towards the back, and we're just going to get a build from that last piece. Let's get saucy with it. A little mohawk of deliciousness right there, just to pop that green a little bit. <laughs> I'm telling you, team, you show up Christmas, Tuesday, with this baby right here, and you're a barbecue hero. Um, you know, I, I I know it's a big cut. You could slice it thinner if you like. If you got somebody in the family who's not really into medium rare meat, you can throw it back on and blister sear it. That's a method I like to uh, do quite often with pork, especially. Uh, but this is as good as it gets, folks, and super simple. Remember, technique will win every time. Uh, so all we did, and I keep on reiterating because I can't believe it myself how simple this is, season it, sear it, paint it, roast it, slice it. But the let it rest, I swear, the let it rest is the hardest thing about this. I swear it is. Uh, let me go track down a, a fork and a steak knife and we'll taste this together. I'm super excited to see if that smoky note comes through in the crust. You know, it's so nice to to just nail it. You owe it to yourself to, to do this and just frickin' nail it, you know? And it's as simple as hitting 100, 120. So I'm gonna come on over here. That's the decal on the outside. And then we've got that nice eye there. I'm gonna go for that. So the, the, the technical term for this, you call it the ribeye decal. Some people call it spinalis. This is the best part on the entire cow. Oh my gosh, look at that. And I'm gonna do this bite. That's a huge bite. Come on, come on. I've been chewing for half. Let's do. Let's do a bite without the sauce. Wow, that is spectacular. Let's let's uh, let's dab a little sauce on there. As if it could get any better. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. There's Christmas come early here. You know. So folks, that's absolutely delicious and super simple. Uh, happy holidays from Chef Eric Gephardt and Kamada Joe and from my backyard, my, or my, it's not my backyard, from my good friend's backyard. Uh, cheers to you team.